There's no sight that quite warms my heart like having cattle on pasture. What do you think, Abby Dog? Should we go over and say hello? Good morning, cows. How's everybody doing? So we had another major spring milestone here on the farm yesterday. I moved our cattle out to pasture. When my cattle first got here back in October of last year, all five of them spent the first couple of months just out on pasture, eating grass, enjoying the outdoor life. I would move them on a daily basis to fresh pasture. Things were working great. But then, you know, our hard Vermont winter set in and it became time to move them into a setting where they would have access to a barn, where they'd be able to get them water without having it freeze. And so I migrated them into our barn area. The barn area, while it wasn't perfect, actually worked fairly well. I had them set up where I could feed them hay easily. I had a water trough that for the most part didn't freeze. And as the winter months went on, we ended up having four calves, two bull calves, Jimi Hendrix and Joey Ramone, as well as two heifer calves, Belinda Carlisle. And I don't think I ever told you guys the fourth calf's name. It's Bonnie McMurray. Calving season went as smooth as it possibly could have. We had everything go right, and I feel very lucky. Overall, the winter housing situation worked out pretty well. But as the calves got older, I did have a few issues with them escaping. And what started as just a minor single escape attempt turned into an epidemic over the last couple of days, particularly as all of our grass went from brown to green. As soon as the cattle saw all the green grass, they were going crazy for it. They were bending the fencing to try to get access to the grass. The little calves were finding ways to slip under the fence to get out to get the grass. It was just not good. And so yesterday I decided to finally move them out to pasture, even though it's still a little bit early. Now this time around, moving the cattle, I was working by myself. I've trained my cattle to respond to eating alfalfa cubes, which is what you see me feeding them here out of this green bucket. And so they're very used to following me. Whenever they see the green bucket, whenever they see my handout, they've gotten comfortable with it. The challenge was they also had access to green grass as I walked them through the alleyway, which was gonna ultimately lead them into the pasture. And so because of that, I actually had to poke and prod them a little bit more than I would have liked because it was the only way to get them moving into the pasture. But once they made it into the pasture, they were pretty darn happy. I've been supplementing their feed just a little bit with some extra hay because we still had some cold nights and the grass is still growing. But I figured this was the perfect time to start them out on pasture. Particularly the calves still need to learn not to go under the fencing, which actually brings me to the task I gotta do this morning. Now you guys might be wondering why is Abby on leash? Well, the answer is because I don't know if <laughs> Sweetie, it's okay, it's okay. Well, actually, that's exactly why Abby's still on leash. I was gonna start working on training her today to the cattle fencing and how to deal with the cattle. You know, when it comes to the cattle, Toby's been outstanding. Abby, because she's got so much playful puppy energy, I have been a little bit worried about that. So I came out here today to actually show her how to deal with the fence and not get spooked off. I also don't want her running around with the cattle because she could spook the cattle, have them break through their fencing and create chaos. Oh, but I didn't mean to shock you, sweetie. Poor Abby girl. I guess that's one way for her to learn about the fence. Like I said earlier, the other animals that are still learning about the fence are the calves. You can see when Abby got spooked, a couple of them, actually Joey Ramone and Bonnie McMurray, scooted out. They'll come back in pretty soon. But I found last year a very good technique for teaching the cattle to respect the fence. So I'll initially attach these aluminum cans to the fence and the cattle will try to be attracted to them and lick them. And then much like poor little Abby girl, they get a little bit of a jolt and act proper. You might think my fence is a little low right now. That's also part of the calf containment strategy. I guess the good news is the calves can't do too much damage because they're not gonna wanna get too far from their parents. The only thing is I want them to learn to fear and respect the fence. Fear and respect that escalator. Or else I will have problems with them for their entire lives. While Toby has long since learned to respect this fence, I will admit that Abby getting shocked like that is not the worst thing in the world to have happen. There's nothing like training cattle with bougie seltzer cans. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get our two stray calves back in the fence. Like I said, they were doing really good, but then got spooked by Abby. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, Joey. Can I get you under there? Whoop. You know, 
Barney's already afraid of it. Oh, there you go. Good job. I do take heart in knowing that those are our two smallest calves. And so as they grow bigger, they won't be able to slip under as easily. Like for example, Jimi Hendrix, who's about a month older than them, definitely doesn't like to try to go under there. Neither does Belinda Carlisle. By the way, how good is Toby Dog with these cattle? He loves to be out here with them. Kind of just watching and spending time. You know, Toby and Abby's breed is the Maremma Sheepdog, which really makes them much more suited to be with animals of the size of calves than anything else. So it kind of makes sense that they could naturally be comfortable like that. Oh, would you look at that? Bonnie and Joey are headbutting each other and playing. That's adorable. And if anybody's wondering, all four calves are actually half siblings. So they each have a different mom, but their dad was all the same one bull. This guy right here. Let's go check on our mobile chicken coop. Hey, chicka chicka chicka. I gotta say, I am absolutely loving this new chicken setup. Here, chicken chickens. Have some table scraps. <laughs> Yeah, this mobile setup has worked out great. Keeps everything nice and clean. The chickens have been very easy to take care of in this setup. I have zero complaints about this. I'm very glad I made this thing. So far, this contraption has worked out phenomenally well. Once I move the cattle out from that side, I will start the following process with the chickens and the cattle. And so the chickens will go exactly to the spot that the cattle were at. Let's see if we got any eggs yet. Ooh. One fresh one, and I still have a couple of girls in there laying. The other thing I will say about this setup is my eggs are coming out so much cleaner with this new nesting box. It's that roll away design where the egg goes in and then it drops to the front and then I just pull it out of this pouch. That could not have worked out any better. You know, when my chickens were laying eggs with the ducks, the ducks would make the eggs absolutely filthy. And even when I had dedicated chicken coops that were the more traditional nesting box, they'd get covered in poop pretty regularly. How clean these eggs are coming out right now has me wondering if I should actually think about getting more to the chicken egg game. One question some of you guys have asked me is, how did I choose the specific chickens that I have outside in this contraption versus the ones that are still living up at the duck house? And well, the answer is that these chickens that you see right here are my best layers, and they're also my larger birds. And now that I'm done with incubating goose eggs, I'm getting ready to start the process of hatching ducks and chickens, and I wanted to have these guys as a separate flock where they will be all fertilized by Buck the rooster, and they should be making some good dual purpose birds that are good for both egg laying as well as i can take the young roosters and throw them in the freezer mm -mm, good. don't be sad you guys that's the most ethical way you can possibly eat chicken come on dogs we'll let the chickens be you got more animals to take care of release the kraken <laughs> Good morning, duckery dudes. How's everybody doing? A casualty of war. I don't know how to get my ducks to stop laying eggs right against the door. I guess I should be thankful that they're laying them in the duck house to begin with, but so many of these get cracked when I open the door immediately. And it's not like I can not release the quacking every morning. It's like one of my daily highlights. Abby, sit. Eating eggs makes her so happy. All right, now we gotta go check on the little baby goslings and see how they're doing. For those of you wondering chronologically what day we're on with the goslings, this is day three since I put them out in the brooder, or I guess since the last video you guys saw. I was kind of worried about them last night because the temps dropped down to 29 degrees as the low. But as you can see, everybody's doing just fine. Because of the heating plates and the lamp, they stay plenty warm. There's also a bunch of them, and so they actually use their body heat to work together to stay warm too. As I'm looking at this though, I do know I need to replace their water. You guys drank through everything last night, good job. In a couple more days, I will change the setup for their watering situation, where they will have plenty more water, but right now I'm just keeping it very limited because with those cold temps, I don't want them to get wet and then potentially get a chill. That's maybe the most dangerous thing. Pretty soon I'll change their watering setup too. I might add a third waterer for overnight tonight. There you go, drink up little ones. By the way, I know some of you are probably wondering about the gosling that I had to make the little leg brace for. Well, you can see him. He's, uh, where is he? Here he is. Right here. This little fella. 
he's doing good. Actually, you can see his legs have kind of gone to normal, so last night I took this off. Yeah, I think he's gonna be uh, A-OK. -okay. And I keep saying he because I think this one's a gander. I don't know, I could be wrong though. You know, the other day as we were editing the video where they hatched and I showed you my brooder setup, I forgot to mention the other thing I put in here, which is grit, so you can see that right there. You guys ready for another little exciting milestone? You're gonna like this one. Stay tuned. That's right, little ones. It's time for your first taste of grass, or gosling spaghetti, as I like to call it. Here, we'll split some up. You guys can share. Put them over here. I actually think it's really important to give the goslings grass and dandelion greens at a very early age. This trains them to help focus their diet on grass. It also provides them with a lot of nutrients that, you know, might be lacking from just the feed alone. You don't want to give them too much and you do need to supplement them and make sure they're getting a decent amount of protein in their food. But at the same time, giving them little grasses like this and getting them started off right is such a good thing for them health-wise. I also find the act of hand feeding them the grass teaches them to get much more comfortable with me. My adult geese though are a little worked up. They are very concerned and curious about what's going on inside this shed and where all those little squeaky noises are coming from. I think I have about eight geese sitting on nests right now and so they should be producing goslings of their own too so so I'm just waiting for that. These four actually that you see right here they were hatched out actually last year. I think we're on our I think almost fourth generation of geese here on the farm and they really are kind of becoming like their own breed unto themselves or at least that's my hope one day. You know this year from a farm business perspective, our fertilized egg business that we, you know, we box up fertilized eggs and send them to people around the country has been doing really well. Actually, the whole early spring goose season overall is doing well. We've been selling a ton of goslings. You know, I know some of you guys wanted to know the final hatching numbers and we ended up hatching a total of 36 eggs. So that wasn't quite the 50% hatching rate that I was hoping for, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. I feel like I did everything I possibly could to get those eggs to hatch. And you probably only saw about 20 some odd goslings in there right now because we've sold I think about 15 14 of them something like that so far and I think I have a couple more orders for people who want to buy goslings and then our fertilized egg business has just been absolutely gangbusters this year and we're pretty much sold out for the year so I don't expect to put more goslings out there on the market but you know a friend of mine actually sent me some video footage the other day and she actually made a whole YouTube video on it I'll, I'll leave a link for it at the end of this video about her experience hatching her goslings so my friend Olivia over at breaking new roots she, she got some eggs from us and she put them in the incubator and hatched them for the first time ever. And it really does show you that it doesn't take a lot for somebody to hatch geese themselves. I think she ended up with four goslings or five. She had one that had some health issues, which admittedly does happen from time to time. But overall, she's got like a nice little goose flock to add to her farm with her and her husband, Pete. And so I'm super excited for them. Like I said, I'll, I'll leave a link for that video at the end of this video. I don't want to spoil her whole dang story. And then finally, last thing we should probably check up on here today is Dottie, the new mom chicken. How's she doing? Oh, looks like they need more food and they should probably clean out their water because they've made it filthy yet again. But yeah, Dottie is doing well. I ended up moving her out of her little nest in the barn just because the cattle were going away. I was worried she wouldn't have any protection and she actually ended up losing one of the chicks. And so the other night I snuck up on her while she was sleeping, pulled her off her nest, grabbed her little ones, grabbed her, and I put them all in this chicken tractor as a way to keep them safe. So far it's working out good. She'll stay in here for a couple weeks with them until they get bigger and then I'll integrate her back in. Because daddy's a leghorn, she probably will end up going with the egg layer flock, but part of me actually thinks about keeping her with my other flock, which I have a special project that I'm not ready to talk about, and so you'll have to wait for that one. But all in all, it's been an incredible spring season so far. It's amazing just how the, the farm is just absolutely teeming with life. And like I said, if you wanna see some more new lives getting created, check out Olivia's video up here or check out something from us. And thanks for watching everybody. We'll be back with some more updates real soon.